Hi there, this is Ranjit and in this uh, video I'm going to talk about the sensors present on your smartphone and what you should know about uh, them. Whenever you're buying a smartphone, most of the users actually uh, figure out what is the processor used and maybe how much RAM and storage that it has but really uh, users will figure try to figure out what are the sensors present on the smartphone and trust me it is very important to know what kind of sensors your smartphone has because the functionality of a smartphone will be dependent on the sensors it has so here i'm going to talk about the sensors available on a smartphone and generally if you're going to have a high-end smartphone it will have most of the sensors but again in the mid-range in the lower end uh, uh, spectrum uh, manufacturers tend to skip a lot of sensors so let's first talk about the basic sensor that you will find on almost every smartphone and that is known as the proximity sensor it will be placed very close to the earpiece there's a small uh, hole that you'll find near uh, your uh, earpiece and generally that's the proximity sensor and the uh, thing that the proximity sensor does is that whenever you make a call on your smartphone if you have noticed whenever you bring the handset close to your ear the screen actually blacks out that is happening due to the proximity sensor so whenever a uh, object comes close to uh, the earpiece it will black out the screen so that you don't get those accidental touches so that's the basic functionality of a proximity sensor and these days almost every smartphone has a proximity sensor next we have this ambient light sensor uh, which is again uh, as it says it's ambient light sensor it measures the light and based on that the intensity of your uh, brightness of the screen changes for example if you take your smartphone out in uh, direct sunlight it will uh, try to boost up the brightness of the screen so that it is visible and again when you bring it indoors and in very low lighting conditions it will do the opposite it will try to lower down the what do you say uh, screen brightness so that it does not hurt your eyes so this is done by the auto brightness sensor and this measurement is also known as sometimes uh, they say as lux lux is the measurement of light so it is also denoted as a lux sensor in some of the handsets and um, again this is again found in almost every high end smartphone but many of the mid range smartphones tend to skip these sensors for example samsung in their most of their mid range lineup even those cost about 15 18000 tend to skip this auto brightness sensor next we have a, a sensor that is known as accelerometer and again this is also found in almost every smartphone out there and this is sort of very important in a smartphone and this measures the speed of movement in your smartphone for example uh, this also determines the for example if you have your smartphone like this when you tilt it like this the orientation changes and this is happening due to the accelerometer it measures the movement of your smartphone and based on that it can uh, give uh, the sensor can give uh, instructions to the cpu so that it can act so and this sensor is actually very very important even gaming and stuff that you do most of the time tilting and stuff this is done by accelerometer so this is a very very important sensor that is found on smartphone and generally this is found on almost every smartphone out there now we have one more sensor that is known as the pedometer sensor this is not very important but if your smartphone has a pedometer sensor it can detect uh, how much you have walked so you have uh, many smartphones that show you how much you have walked and that is determined by the pedometer sensor it's strictly not a must-have sensor but these days many of the smartphones do have that functionality and next we have the compass sensor and this used to be actually very common earlier and using a compass sensor sensor again uh, you can determine the north and, north and south direction like a compass as it says uh, this was actually found in almost every smartphone out there but these days in some of the mid-range uh, phones uh, uh, they are sort of skipping this compass sensor and this compass sensor also helps in gps uh, then we also have the gyroscope sensor and uh, this has sort of become important uh, recently because uh, if you want to use VR or 360 degrees videos or augmented reality, you need the gyroscope sensor. And the, with the gyroscope sensor, uh, your uh, smartphone will know exactly the X, Y and Z axis. Hence, with the gyroscope sensor, if you're holding the phone like this or holding it like this or holding in any direction, the smartphone knows that and it can orientate the content. That is very important in virtual reality applications or even with 360 degrees videos. So if your smartphone does not have a gyroscope sensor, so virtual uh, reality applications and 360 degrees video kind of content won't work properly. And sadly, the gyroscope scope sensor is uh, generally found only on mid-range to higher-end phones it might not be present on entry-level smartphones 
and generally with Samsung again, most of the mid-range smartphones particularly do not generally have a gyroscope sensor. So if you plan to use VR and 360 degrees uh, videos, make sure your smartphone has the gyroscope sensor. Uh, next is the barometer sensor that we have and this is not for detecting the what do you say pressure uh, but this barometer sensor with this barometer sensor your smartphone can determine at what altitude you are and this is indirectly this information is indirectly sent to the gps thus it helps gps for faster locks this is not found in almost a, uh, every smartphone but generally high-end smartphones do have this and this aids in the gps locks now moving to the gps uh, gps uh, it's not a sensor it's basically a gps chip again uh, almost every smartphone these days have a, has a gps chip but again this comes in two uh, uh, variants uh, generally the default gps will be there and this is the older one that's the traditional uh, gps satellites and that was uh, done by us they have uh, 131 uh, satellites but there is also one more uh, satellite navigation system known as glonass this these are these satellites were released by uh, what do you say russia they have about 24 satellite satellite so if your phone has to take advantage of that glonass so it should have that chip also and generally many of the high-end smartphones and these days also mid-range smartphones have both the chips for gps navigation Hence, if you have these uh, both of them, uh, then the GPS locks will be a lot faster. So if uh, your highest priority, uh, you do a lot of navigation and use the GPS a lot, make sure your phone has both uh, the GPS, that is regular GPS and also the GLONASS. That will uh, speed up the GPS locks. And again, we have the fingerprint scanner, which is very common. These days we are finding it on almost every other smartphone. So that's the fingerprint scanner. We have a lot of, uh, we have this, this one is on the back, but we, some other phones have it on the front. So that's the fingerprint uh, scanner. And uh, again, we also have NFC uh, chips. These are not sensors, we, they are NFC chips. Many smartphones actually have that, been having that. Generally, the high-end smartphones are having that. But uh, NFC is actually becoming a lot common now because of Android Pay and Samsung Pay. That uh, touch to pay that you're uh, seeing these days a lot, that uses NFC, that is near field communication. And NFC is not just used for payments. Uh, it can also be used uh, on devices that have NFC support. For example, I had a Bluetooth speaker that was NFC enabled. For generally pairing a, what do you say, Bluetooth speaker with your smartphone, you have to switch on the Bluetooth and manually pair that. But if uh, your phone and the device is NFC compatible, you just have to pick up the device and just tap it and it pairs automatically. So in that way also, NFC was used. And uh, these days I'm, I'm seeing that NFC chips are getting more prevalent. And even in some of the mid-range smartphones, we are seeing NFC functionality and uh, uh, this is another one sensor that's a combination of magnetometer and it's also known as the hall sensor and uh, again I'll give you an uh, uh, example very crude example for this one for example if you have ever used a, a tablet or a smartphone for example ex I had the Samsung Galaxy S4 uh, with me and I had purchased the official Samsung flip case with that and with that, whenever I used to flip the, what do you say, case over the phone without even if the phone was on standby, it used to shut off the screen. And that uh, for that, it was using the hall sensor. And again, we see this on the tablets also. If uh, many of the tablets have a case uh, where you just put the case, the tablet uh, goes to standby mode. And that is done by the hall sensor. And uh, we also have this one more functionality. This is exactly not a sensor. This is a hardware functionality. We find this a lot on Samsung phones. That's the optical uh, heart rate uh, sensor that we get on the back. It uh, pulses the light uh, and you can put your finger on it and that determines your heart rate. So it's not a total sensor, but we are seeing that on some of the smartphones, particularly Samsung high-end smartphones do have that. And lastly, we are also having one more uh, uh, what do you say again this is not a sensor but one more functionality that is known as ir blasters on smartphones uh, and if your smartphone has an ir blaster you can use it like a remote controller to control television air conditions and other devices sadly we are not finding a lot of what do you say ir sensors on smartphones these days earlier samsung used to give the ir sensor on their high-end smartphones for example if i recall the note 4 had the ir uh, 
uh, IR blaster sensor, the Galaxy S4, the Galaxy S5. But now the new smartphones are not having that. Uh, but uh, on the budget end, the Xiaomi phones uh, all have the IR blaster. So if you want the remote control functionality on your smartphone, uh, check if it has the IR blaster functionality. So these were some of the common uh, sensors found on the smartphone. And I hope uh, this video was helpful and it helps you determining what these sensors actually do. So guys, so that's it for now for uh, this video. And if you're not subscribed to my YouTube channel, hit that subscribe button. Thanks for watching. This is Ranjit and I hope to see you in my next video.